I hope you do it with you. We are in another interesting content that is about photosynthesis. We're going to learn about testing of factors for photosynthesis here in this video number four of chapter number two of grade 11 science. So testing of factors for photosynthesis is what we are going to see and what we will learn in this video test for factors of photosynthesis as light energy, carbon dioxide, chlorophyll. How we can test whether these are important for the photosynthesis and then after that is plants giving away oxygen? Let's find out that also. Okay, as a byproduct, is the plant is giving oxygen away? The plant should be kept in dark for 48 hours before the experiment to show that light energy and carbon dioxide is needed for photosynthesis. What you're going to do is you're going to take a pot of plant and going to keep it in a dark place where you are not receiving sunlight for how many hours? 48 hours before the experiment to show that the light energy and carbon dioxide is needed for photosynthesis. When the plant is in the dark, the stored starch completely removes from the leaves. When the plant is in the dark, what happened exactly? Stored starch completely removes from the leaves. Then after that, we are going to take out this plant, which was kept in a very dark place. We will conduct the following to show that light energy is required for photosynthesis. Let's understand how to, how to do that one. Experiment to show the light energy is required for photosynthesis. Now, what are we going to do? Materials required. Potted plant kept in dark for 48 hours. Definitely we kept it in 48 hours. Materials needed for starch test. For the starch stage, we can use the iodine solution. That is right. So, we can definitely test for starch. Now, let's understand black and colorless polythene stripes also we require. What are we going to do with that black and colorless polythene strips? Okay, all right. Now, method. Select two leaves almost similar to each and other and let's put these two, A and B. All right, this was already kept 48 hours inside the house. In a dark place, we are taking that too and cover a part of leaf if A with the black polythene. So we are going to cover one part in the black polythene and part of the leaf B with colorless polythene. Here it is. One part is covered with the black and the, the other side of the leaf, the B side of the leaf. We are covering with what? Polythene. Right, that's transparent. And now the sun had come. Yes, keep it under sunlight for three to five hours. So we are going to keep that one three to five hours we are going to wait three to five hours to do the test right now suppose we came after three to five hours and prepare the leaves for the starch test now right now see what's exactly happening over here there is no color change in the covered area of the leaf a but the covered area of the leaf b turns to purple or blue color here that's the clear difference. This was covered in the black color strip and this particular region was covered in the transparent. But the transparent definitely gave some sort of a, an indication that the sunlight had arrived but the black color one didn't receive. So here the starch is arrived. That's the reason the color had changed. But here the color didn't change because why? That's because it was covered with the black leaf. Now. The covered area of a leaf A has not received light energy, therefore the photosynthesis has not taken place. Hence, there was no color change with iodine solution. The covered area of leaf B with the colorless polythene has received light energy. Therefore, photosynthesis has taken place and showed a color change to dark purple or blue. So here we have dark purple. It's very similar to black purple of course now we understood so this is indicating starch has been produced in the bee leaf so 
Accordingly, we can conclude that light energy is necessary for photosynthesis. Light energy is necessary for photosynthesis, the bright light. Now, experiment to show carbon dioxide is required for photosynthesis. Let's understand whether the carbon dioxide is important. Select two similar leaves of the plants. All right, we are going to select that leaf and we are going to put water in that plastic bag. We are tying that leaf with the plastic bag and we are putting what? Water. And we are choosing another leaf very similar to that and we are putting sodium, potassium hydroxide, sorry, potassium hydroxide we are in, inserting. Now, let's see what happened after three to five hours. After three to five hours, we are going to do the starch test for those two leaves now. Okay, see what exactly happened to those two leaves after some time. Potassium hydroxide inserted leaf didn't give any color change, but the water one gave a ch change. So, potassium hydroxide present in a bag absorbed carbon dioxide. That absorbed the carbon dioxide for that reason. Therefore, leaf does not do photosynthesis as it does not receive carbon dioxide. So, potassium hydroxide will absorb all the carbon dioxide in, the, in that particular leaf. And what happened? Nothing had happened as photosynthesis. Now, therefore, there is no color change in that potassium hydroxide side of a one. But the water, one which is inserted with water, receives carbon dioxide. So, it photosynthesis very nicely. Therefore, a color change can be observed in that area. So, we understood accordingly. It can be concluded that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis also. Remember this experiment for your examination. Now, let's show that chlorophyll is required for photosynthesis. It's a very simple experiment. We're going to take some white color paper patches and we're going to, yes, put circles like that. And we are going to keep that one under sunlight and test for our starch test. And you can see the differences over there. The white color area didn't happen, the photosynthesis. So that says that chlorophyll is also required for photosynthesis. Now finally, we are going to see whether oxygen is giving away. Experiment to show oxygen is produced during photosynthesis or not. You won't have and experiment set up like this with an aquatic plant like this. You want to have water in a basin and you are going to collect the gas in this test tube while you want to have light energy to do that. So you are giving light energy and keeping for some time. And what you are going to do? Okay. Gas bubbles release from the aquatic plant. You see, gas bubbles are releasing from the aquatic plant and that gas gets collected at the top of the boiling tube. Now, after that accumulation of gas, about three-fourth of the, its volume, the tube will be taken out and a glowing splinter is inserted to test whether the gas is oxygen. What will happen when you are putting that? The splinter will burn with a bright flame so we can conclude that the gas given out in photosynthesis is oxygen. Gas given out in photosynthesis oxygen. This place, whatever the gas that got accumulated was oxygen. We understood that. So, Lavoisier is the first scientist who showed that oxygen diffused from green plants in the presence of sunlight. So, what we came to know, now we know that test for factors of photosynthesis, light energy is required, light energy is required. We did a test for the light energy with the black and transparent strips. Carbon dioxide is required with, with two plastic bags. One is filled with water and the other one is filled with potassium hydroxide. And we did the test also. And then after that, chlorophyll with the paper patches. It's a very simple one. And we did the starch test with iodine and we found out the places where are covered with the white patches didn't have chlorophyll so the photosynthesis didn't happen is plants give away oxygen we found out that also with the hydrilla plant experiment so we came to know the tests as well so i'm going to meet you in another beautiful session till then bye bye take care of yourself